Welcome, everyone. I'm going to give folks a couple minutes to um, to show up. Uh, we're about, I think we're about halfway there in terms of uh, the registered attendees. All right, it's starting to slow down. So I think we're there. Um, on, on stage, you can see our poets, Samia Bashir, Erica Foreman, Rachel Eliza Griffith, and Sarah Bird, who is our ASL interpreter. Uh, I'm going to say goodbye to the poets for a second, and they'll be uh, back on stage. Uh, welcome to the fourth edition of the Kitchen Table uh, reading series. I hope that everyone in the audience is staying safe and, and take care, taking care of themselves. Uh, if you're in the Northeast, I hope you found shelter in the snowstorm we had this week, but I also hope that you had a chance to get out there and in, enjoy the snow. Yesterday, I served as a human sled for my youngest son. They're back out there in the snow again, and I'm very happy to be um, not a human sled right now, to be safely in the kitchen uh, talking to all of you. Uh, Today, I'm really happy to have an all-star lineup. Uh, you saw them earlier, Samia Bashir, Erica Foreman, and Rachel Eliza Griffith. I met all of these poets um, at, a, at the writing retreat sponsored by Kave Kanem, an arts organization that has championed Black poetry and really over the last two decades um, has changed the face of contemporary American poetry. Um, before we hop into some poems, I wanted to start with the keeping the lights on section. <laughs> Of, of these readings. I'm trying to be as non-commercial as, as possible, but at, at the same time, if you want poetry, you have to feed poets. Um, so during the reading, I'll throw a list of um, the poet's most um, recent poetry collections into the chat. I'd appreciate it if you would consider uh, buying a copy of their book, preferably at your uh, favorite local bookstore. Poetry makes great stocking stuffers, and it is the season. Um, I'm also indebted to the Solstice MFA program uh, where I teach poetry. Solstice uh, generously allows me to use their uh, Zoom account for these webinars. And that generosity is, is generally indicative of a greater generosity that pervades the spirit of, of the program. We're a group of committed diverse writers who push each other to perfect our, our craft in a variety of genres from children's lit to nonfiction to, to poetry. Um, so if you're interested in exploring your writing skills, we're a low res program, so you don't even have to lose your day job. Um, we're a supportive close-knit environment. Please come check us out. Okay, onward um, into the poem. I wanted to start um, today with a Carl Phillips poem, um, uh, partly because of the Kaveh Kahnem connection. He taught a workshop during one of those retreats I mentioned that I think some of us attended. And also, because I think it's important at the um, end of the year here, at this particular year, to remember those we've lost in, in 2020. And I think that this poem um, speaks to how we can uh, approach grief. Hymns and fragments. These are the gloves of doe skin he had specially made after and never wore. He'd shot the animal himself. Unfairly, it seemed at the time. Still seems so, crouched in a locust tree, bow and arrow. There had been, he said, no struggle. Of his own dying, he said it was like many things but mostly like watching a harbor slowly empty of the ships it held, the one that brought him here, leaving among them, distinguished easily by its single low-masted sail that raised, risen, seems a sail no longer, but more, a shield from which all device, all signature of heraldry has been cleared as a mark of expulsion from what turns out to have been at best a ragged nobility. What's to regret? Naked that first time I ever saw him. Naked now in this light, he looks, his body looks like a set of instructions I don't expect I'll need. Here's how to keep what's good from spoiling. 
This is how you paint a sleeping bird. I love Carl's long sentences. It, it's hard to, it might be hard to tell not seeing the poem, but there's a very long, so I think the third sentence is this very long, beautiful, ornate sentence. And I also love that leap um, that he makes at, at the end of the poem. Um, all right, first up, let's get into the main event. First up, um, we have a, a poet who is normally based in Portland, Oregon, but who's been weathering the um, pandemic out here on the East Coast in, in Cape Cod and what seems like a very charming spot right by the sea. Uh, Samia, Samia Bashir, everyone. Hello, hi. Thank you, Ian. This is fantastic. Um, let's see, I'm hopefully I can make this work. Um, sorry, I don't know. Okay, hopefully you all can see me. Um, I'm just gonna say yes. Uh, so thank you, Ian. Thank you, Sarah, for uh, your transcription translation. Um, and I'm really outrageously, outrageously excited to be here with Erica and Rachel. And so I'm gonna just read some poems because I wanna hear them. Um, so I'm gonna start, uh, I'm actually, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is go back. I'm gonna start um, with an affirmation. Um, and this is from uh, my first book, which was 15 years ago. That astounds me right now. Um, so, you know, come on stock and stuffers. I love that. You know. All right, so this is uh, an affirmation. Um, it's called Death Toll. I made it. I crossed over every bridge without jumping, waited for green light, each time before running into traffic, swallowed no gun barrels, threw no bloody baths, swung from no trees without a seat attached. Didn't take anyone with me. Almost can't believe I'm lying here, my kids and the tag along therapist sitting nearby in tears with no thoughts of their monetary inheritance, trying to block out even their spiritual one, wanting to keep me with them one more day. Verbose as ever, but my mouth is dry. I've been ready for decades, I say, but I'm glad to have had until today. My heart partner holds my hand and my lovers send cards out of respect. She douses my forehead with magnolia water, dots my lips, with rose hip kisses. Often shushed grannies pull my toes, ask when we can play their favorite game again. I tell them, tomorrow, my sweets. Tomorrow we'll play. Here's the thing. Things fall apart. I'm sort of sleeping and I'm on fire undone, burned, stripped of skin. I feel so raw these days, flattened, full of doubt, numb. Rats thrive in sewers, so maybe I'm thriving. It may seem simple enough, but my dreams don't say so. This, I think I know. No one notices me. Lost, alone, blind as a sewer rat, six feet back, gelatinous, raw as a baby rat, shook, underdone, two full rats still hungry, rich rat, swimming sewage, breadline rat, baker rat, transformed, stuck in a well, thriving, burned into brick road, milepost sign. Triumphant. I scream, but words burn like sky fire. Clammy. Street rat. Fell in a hole, stuck in a well. I rattle the cages of our children. Everywhere else is empty. I am fluent in fire. 
fluent in indigo miseries. I am fluent in the absence of heat. A rat on the street, sudden and melt. I am fluid in how time presses a body. Here's the thing, I'm not supposed to say, I saw others skulk the dark like me. Simple enough. I skulk away a little more each day. Maybe there is intelligent life, but I'm not it. How will we survive this having a body? Trying to be intelligent life, fireball struck and stuck. I study the crows who know this, having a body to fly. Almost a dream, a sign you're not supposed to notice, a path, who can I be? Blame the apocalypse, it's melt, it's bends, it never ends. Thing is, things fall apart. I'm not saying I'm a prophet, but I know the meaning of a moment let down, burning. I'm almost sure I'm here, transformed, torn apart, average, boring, humdrum. No sound stays innocent, numb. Every day, the end of the world is now again. Normal. I burn and remember having a body how it feels, cold. If I hold no beauty in this slapdash world, then tuck me away from the heat of the day. Alone, I burn. Blame the humdrum numbness of the end of the world. I listen for the wind. Intelligent life, where is it? No sound in innocent means, root way. I am not saying I'm a prophet, but I always travel slightly singed, pressed by time, six feet back. I find the me who's tall as a gum tree, the me with copper hair, causeway me, opening, expanse, eyes open, heart full of doubt. I strike my fireballs and burn, sort of dreaming, now volcano. Now oil slicked river, stripped of skin, fluent in the press of time. Eyes open, sewer rat, thriving. No sound stays innocent. Rats, foot pack, corridor, clearing, and yes, the bushes burn like sky fire. And I decide to survive. Claim every sunrise. I am dark as earth. Now I am the me with the bright yellow hair. Me with the normal girth. Wait, normal. Do I know that word? Did I ever? Is it normal to hang from a tree? Wow, that came back on. Is it normal? An ability to breathe? Is it normal to hang from a tree? Is normal inability to breathe. Are normal these panic attacks? Does normal stand whole bodies back? Tucked away from the end of the day, listen for how to survive this body. Face twisted, slightly singed, fueled by my own crisp flames, condemned. I know the meaning of a moment, but here's the thing. Am I intelligent life? <laughs> How could I tell? The crows know. I know I'm not road, I'm doorway. And when things fall apart again, I'll be here. My rectangular shade of blue. I'm not supposed to talk about transformation though. Not the me with the hollow cheeks. The me with the blood red stride, fluent in the need to dance. Me with holes in 14 places. And I said, I meant moles, but really I couldn't. <laughs> Here, having a body. Me with three nose rings, 
Normal, I grasp for a branch. Normal, me with the war wounds, I, I thrive. Gutter rat, the burning quiet of stars. Who else can I be? The crows know. So, yeah, it's interesting. Ian mentioned that I'm, I'm here in exile right now and because magic, magic. Um, and this moment, this year, and, and my, I've read the end of it, yes. Um, and all the things, <laughs> every day the end of the world is now again. Come on, stocking stuffers. Um, I'm gonna give a little plug because one of the things I believe in um, since we're all locked down, all we, um, is I do this thing, I did this thing in the spring called Quarantine Story Time, where every night for half an hour I read Toni Morrison's Song of Solomon. And tomorrow, for the return of the light, I start again with Octavia Butler's kin, Kindred. And I throw that here because I just, I want to read you a couple of poems that aren't mine. A couple of poems that have been living in my body this year and for which I'm grateful. The first is called Old Addresses and it's from Chakubre Dunlady's Semiotics, which came out this fall, uh, won the Kaveh Kahnem Prize, Evie Shockley um, and chose. Um, old Addresses. Sloppily shorn nappy hairs, a half full bed, stirring above the seizure of the washing machine, a junkie for neglect, rending the half empty bed. Finger paint art, pretending to gesture, chasing your face in a dream where I'm sitting on it. You as a girl when you used to be dancing with a black boy, prom date, three parallel scars, fighting to be reinvested, a maelstrom of Verida, almost resonating down a summer sexy squeal, something like I wanna do a luminous half-life. The devil's array of scores, him to God, zero. He, there are ways, there are days we run, naked through wishing. We knew each other as teenagers, the shit smell of new diagnoses and hair clarities peeled into lamplight, roaches giving birth beneath my pillow. Banal weight gain, enthused weight loss, a chest finder, black and body physics, embodied in the swirling of prairie grass. Dirty rain in the cistern. Apartment number five, the quickening dark, these eyes. And yeah, that's old addresses. <laughs> Check Ruby, Dunlady, semiotic. Check it out. And then I'm, I'm gonna read one more poem from another amazing new book coming out. This is called Rituals in Kitchen Bowls. And um, this is from a uh, kick-ass uh, Sudanese poet, Lamis Bader. Uh, it's coming out with the African Poetry Book Series. Um, you're gonna wanna get it, that's all I know. Rituals in Kitchen Bowls. I fasted for 40 days parted my body into two halves, washed you off the right side, then the left. But you are not a sin, you are redemption. The recipe goes, burn sage twice a day, but breathing you out is not enough. I bathe in it, summon the holy back. This is not an exorcism. You can't ask your ghosts to stay or come back real next time, more flesh, more touch. This is not an exorcism. Every prayer to let you go is followed by all the ways you're still beautiful. Your last breaths were a symphony and there's no room for eulogies here. This is not an exorcism. Because you don't wish your demons well. This is not an exorcism because I wish them well, not an exorcism. I wish you well. Whew. Poems are coming out in the world, y'all. Poems are coming out in the world. Which thank God, because you know, 
kind of necessary right about now. So I'm going to close because, like I said, I want to hear me some Erica and some Rachel. So I'm going to close with a poem from um, my not first book called Field Theories. And this book is called, this poem is called Second Law. And I think it's useful to know that Albert Murray once said, the second law of thermodynamics ain't nothing but the peace. Yeah. Who was raised? No. Not back now. Who was warned about these things? The maddening. The, the never, who was warned about these things? The never hush, the maddening chafe sliding down a reddened bridge, sprint, disappearing, disappearing. Who was told how to brook it? The hound's tooth stench of olding, that time just runs itself out, that we sisyphus ourselves to glasses hobble wreckage down stair after a bricky stair. That once we leave home, it's gaseous oven. That once we walk the same slow steps as our hide and seek son, that once we face our anti-lovers, anti-gays, bright, open, later, now, eyes smoldered, coats swept open to flash our own scarred bellies, our own hot hands ablaze with spent matches, with burnt out love. Remember love, how it loosed its jaw to our kisses, how it unhinged us, how it tried us like so many keys, like so many rusted locks, how it missed its target despite its kicking, how maybe the force could kill us. Without it, what's left day after day to trundle our legs, what's left to push breath ragged and torn from our lungs. Who was warned? Who was warned? How these solar winds would leave us, brown and bruised as apples, overripe host and blousy seed, this appearing, disappearing. You? Me too. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Samia. Uh, I'm still trying to catch my breath after the, the poems from the first book. Uh, I am fluent in how time passes, uh, sorry, presses a body. My, I felt my body feel that and, and, and understand that, that poem. Thank You're you. adventurous to read without your glasses. I don't, uh, I don't try that. Yeah, that's actually from now, six feet yeah. back. Uh, but the first poem, the first book, because affirmation, because also now, you know. So thank yeah. You. I mean, all of the, the humdrum numbness of the end of the world, too. Like, yeah, that yeah. seems prophetic now. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> all right. Um, next up, we have uh, Erica Foreman, who's out in Chicago right now, a little central time for us, uh, maybe less snow, but probably just as cold. Yes, there is. Uh, there was some snow and it is now gone away in favor of the sun, which I'm very grateful for. Um, and also grateful to you, Ian, for having me come um, and share this beautiful magical space with my sister poets, Samia and Rachel Eliza. Um, I couldn't have asked for a better Zoom reading to end 2020. I've done so many, but this one, I'm like, yes, this is a perfect way to exit out of this year. So um, I'm gonna start with, as we look to whatever future means, um, I'm gonna read a poem by Audre Lorde called New Year's Day. The day feels put together hastily, like a gift for grateful beggars being better than no time at all. But the bells are ringing in cities I have never visited. And my name is printed over doorways I have never seen while extracting a bone or whatever is tender or fruitful 
from the core of indifferent days. I have forgotten the touch of sun, cutting through uncommitted mornings. The night is full of message I cannot read. I am too busy forgetting air like fur on my tongue, and these tears, which do not come from sadness, but from fruit in a sometimes wind. Rain falls like tar on my skin. My son picks up a chicken heart at dinner asking, does this thing love? Deft, unmalicious, fingers of ghosts pluck over my dreaming, hiding whatever it is of sorrow that would profit me. I am deliberate and afraid of nothing. And then I'm gonna read the rest of the poems by me um, from Salt Body Shimmer, which I'm gonna read off the screen, uh, which proves a little less difficult for me these days, funnily enough, considering I live on screens, but um, yeah, we're gonna start in the past and go again towards some, some future dreaming. This is hydrocephalus as a misnomer for water god. My small fingers point to the child, paled from sun, gilded in plastic gold, moon-faced, swaddled in white lace, no bigger than a silver dollar. Amongst the shrine of grandchildren, nieces, nephews, adopted children from church. And like any myth, your sister, just like that, died, water on the brain. I asked for her name, Tempest, a squall too small for all that Atlantic. I learned two things. I was not the first of our line to hold a fraction of the sea's language, salt degrading the world's fragile questions and I am a miracle, can at least bring what little offerings I have, give almonds, raspberry leaves, sativa, to what, not, to what does not want to own me, sonar through the sea's soft malevolence. Who knows what becomes of us once we're marine snow except Olakun, and they're not obligated to tell us shit. I hear their laughter and think of you walk on rhythm and think of you. What is Atlantis to a child born in the wake, but iridescent, sharp as shells, ready to open the flesh? And I should say, uh, there's a line from E.B. song, um, We Think of You from, I think their first album included, and then the reference to In the Wake, if you have not read Christina Sharp's uh, seminal text, In the Wake, you should. This next poem is called Blue Magic. Uh, it is winter and the black girls are out here trying to keep our scalps moisturized. So maybe you're using a little blue magic to get that task done. Blue magic. Equipped from the siege, it takes detangling a tender headed child's hair. Mama arms herself. Thick tooth comb parting fields of naps. Bushels of soft kink pulled through rubber bands. Roots grown into stalks. Brown bound by metallic threaded black. The click of two bright marbled orbs. Each Saturday night we do this dance. When she had no room for my mother's and my libretto. Our fussing. The rafter pitch of my wail. Just right of her reach. A thin yellow promise to pop my balled up fist should I think of breaking loose. A thunderhead after washing, drops of conditioner thick water plump tufts of crowded strands. She pulled the plaques tight, slathered my raw scalp with blue magic. Phyllis sings, when I give my love this time, I'm gonna make it last forever. And perhaps this too is how I'm wrought the steel of being beautiful, tears for what hands can do, wrangled wild rind corkscrewed from the fruit, making my grandfather's line repent. But oh, those wayward vines of riverine, the devil is a lie in the name of hot combs, hair picks, bobby pins, and satin scarves. 
I wonder if my mother saw herself in the schoolyard as I smoothed down the feral edges of my hair, watching some brilliant black boy backflip across the grass. In the morning mirror, gel on the bristles of a slender brush, I scooped the baby hairs along my temple into shelves. We drove down seven miles singing Anita Baker, too early for all that heartbreak. I must have refused her kiss at least once at drop off, at least once she must have squinted with worry at my newfound love for adornment, her knuckles white as she pulled away. I don't remember looking back. Next poem is called One Blues in the Hand, Good as Several in the Blood. Having not chopped but brought in the wood, stacked the hunks into a monument for burning, having scrubbed the mollusks to gleam, having browned them open, seasoned a bath that would wash away any shame to run from, sponge the milky brine with garlic bread brushed with oil, of ripe olives from the long rows of trees I did not pluck from or grow. I know what it means to be lucky and alive, to suck out the pit, gather the cleft, leap in the go-go of a good day, hearken a lineage, third descendant of Roxy Morris, of mechanic garb smeared in crude and sweat, cranking wrench beneath, Fire crown of auburn nap and freckle, architect of spades games, full plates and easy shade, of cuss your children out for sawing her good dining room chairs with the steak knives, of migration and leaving husbands, of one blues in the hand is as good as several in the blood who escape novel death, the lucky and scarred colliding like genres, genes, of those who love too much, a well, archive of my heart, a wonder in winter dirt, holding over consequence, waiting, green, budding and bursting, women of sequin tatter, sunrises hem and haw, light rising as buttered cornbread, skimming gold off the anxious water. And I'm going to read just two more poems. Um, I don't want to be um, flippant about not traveling for the holidays for those uh, that gives them tons of joy. The best thing about traveling home is the home is not necessarily the holiday rush of things. Um, so I am finding myself missing Detroit very much. Um, this poem is called Still Life of Acme in Spring, and it's for Francine and for Detroit. From my mouth, forgive me, friend, woman. When I said there are no flowers here, I forgot to mention the bloom of lace around a young girl's ankle at Easter. Her peony-shaped Afro puffs, carnelian carnations, pinned to dresses honoring those mothers not lost. A spectrum of May collected from Eastern Market, rode in mismatched rainbows in red wagons or inside the phantom box of a son's arms. I forget the cured meat spread out from the black barrel of a barbecue, bushel of yarn sopped with sauce, unlike the gauze full of blood from a young boy's head. Dear God, the plankton of music dying our faces in the hot summer streets. Fever of jazz, blush of blues, raw heart confront me, this city always in my face. Bouquet of incense, apothecaries with shea and oils. Give a dollar and I'll show you a conductor, his white bucket symphony. No, I haven't forgotten the fire. Molotov shards spreading orange and gold flames as a field of dahlia across our living room, licking my mother's heels. The heroin wolf dragging me from my bed. I don't blame the addict who didn't know which house to huff and blow down or the firemen arriving late. And yes, angels too. A neighbor who let me 
knees pressed to sternum, watch from his porch as our house ashed itself clean. We have to see the truth of things. Did I say there was no flora here? No pollen shaken from the antler's round head, the yellow dust settling in the cracks of windshield. I meant, give me a plot. I'll dig to the rich black. And then this last poem, which it's hard not to miss most things, but also there's nothing wrong with missing. It gives us something to make sure we don't take for granted when we get back to it. So I miss dance floors terribly. That is my cardio. I don't go to gyms, um, so your girl is struggling. But um, I'm going to end us with a little dance poem. Hopefully, we have our little internal dance parties after we end the poems. Born again on a Pilsen dance floor. Dervish of black pleather, chandelier of ink latticed across my shoulder. I guzzle through the tunnel of a straw return to a lover as percussion coaxes my ass into figure eights. Traffic shuffles through the gangway of the club. A woman praises, yes, hair flip, until I am a cyclone of forgetting. Mizuku in fishnet conjures on top of the bar, fastens a metal harness to her crotch, grinds against the machine, bestows a cascade of sparks. Mizuku thrusts slow a waterfall of light across us. Mizuku makes it rain radiant from behind. The brilliance spills out down her legs and look, I have left men for much less. More than likely will do so again. What animals back into the shadow of their hunger? I bear my face the falling Andromeda press against the pyrotechnic glory that threatens to catch me on fire. Let her spray me down before December embezzles me into the same old mistakes, convinced I can be born again every night, exactly like this. Thank y'all so much for being here and for listening. Thank you, Erica. Yes, hair flip, that was great. Um, yeah, I, I missed the dance floor too. Uh, although I have been going to the gym, so I'm, I'm still getting my cardio. And there is so much there that, that you know, there, there are lines there that just really like spoke to the moment, even though I know they're they're not particularly about the moment. Like I, I know what it means to be lucky and alive, and we have to see the truth of things. Like those those lines just popped out for me. Um, and that image of uh, going after a tender-headed child as siege was <laughs> was great. It's real. Course, it's hard out here. Yeah. Um, all right. Thank you so much, Erica. I appreciate it. Um, uh, to close us out today, uh, we have one of my best best poetry friends, part of the Bro crew of uh, Brooklyn poets that seem to be taking over the world right now. Um, but she's coming to us from her home state of Delaware today, uh, Rachel Eliza Griffith. Hey. Um... Hey everybody, Ian, thank you so much um, for gathering us here. It just feels super special, um, like Erica and, and maybe Samia, this is my last reading for 2020. And um, I just feel this was a Zoom I looked forward to because we all, I don't need to go there about Zoom, but this was a, a Zoom I looked forward to and just to hear these poems and to kind of feel, um, held by the imagery, the language, um, all the melanin, all the brilliance. It just um, it was something that I always need and I, I especially need it today. So I feel um, super um, grateful to be here. And there's so many, I just wanna say shout out too to so many beautiful people who are um, holding space. There are a lot of poets in the room and um, a lot of readers in the room. And so I just wanna say thank you to you all. Um, as Ian mentioned, I'm here in Delaware um, for family stuff and it feels beautiful to me um, to share poems with you all from seeing the body and to know that um, I wrote this book for my mother and um, to read poems knowing that she's buried just a few miles away feels particularly, particularly um, vibrant and 
devastating and beautiful to me. So um, I just putting all my gratitude out in the air and just hoping 2021 will have have a heart that this year didn't have lungs, have a mouth, have some common sense and won't show its ass, but here we are. So um, I'm gonna start with a poem um, that I've been thinking about a lot as I'm always thinking about her work. And um, this is a poem by the poet Lucille Clifton and it's called, I am accused of tending to the past. I'm accused of tending to the past as if I made it, as if I sculpted it with my own hands. I did not. This past was waiting for me when I came, a monstrous unnamed baby and I with my mother's itch took it to my breast and named it history. She is more human now, learning languages every day, remembering faces, names, and dates. When she is strong enough to travel on her own, beware, she will. So I'm going to start with um, a poem called Good Deeds. Good Deeds. Let's try to hope that's better. Sorry, I'm not in my usual <laughs> space and none of us are, I guess, in a way, even though we're home, we're not in our usual space anyway. So I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? Good deeds. Then think of every song of love hurled at you and yours. Recall how battered you were by sheer understanding so that you might surrender. Not her being gone, but everything else. The world insists you return. You go along with the house rules, with the passage of sunlight means a warmth that is bold enough to burn the world alive. I say, I can't remember how to be the same. I say, I can't pretend to be that woman, the world, or the love song you left behind your eyes. I say that I am beginning to understand the way my friends sing alone inside of walls. Comedy. I am here before the nurse brings my mother breakfast. I study her body, try to remember if I caught my mother in the dream I had the night before, where the hem of her gown flew through a silver tunnel without end. Her skin went right through my hands whenever I was close enough to save her. She slipped through her name, her name I could not stop calling until I sat up alone in my crib, embarrassed she tells me she remembered, remembers how she phoned me last night to let me know she was in the morgue. She laughs as the nurse whose feet squeak and mini mouse crocs arrives with tea. We watch the nurse with eyes that will never remember her face. Thank her for the toast that is thicker than my mother's hand. That morphine is some powerful shit my mother says, I agree with her as though she has merely mentioned it is cold outside, though I have rarely had morphine and have never made courtesy calls from a morgue. It was late and I didn't know where I was, she says, because that wasn't death, which means I couldn't have called you from that place. This is my new mother 
who has finally admitted fear inside the raw ward of her heart. This is my mother who flew away from my grasp in the tunnel without end. The woman who could not wait for me to grasp the white edge of where she was going. I was afraid, she says, looking over the rim of her plastic cup. She shakes the world, chipped ice between us. Yeah, don't go and write about me like that, she says. I already know you will. And one of the things um, I wish I could, I could show you um, about the book is that it's a kind of, it's a kind of hybrid book. And so it has, um, it has inside of it these kind of photographs and things that make up um, the center spine or the center part of the body. I just want to show you, um, and I, I'm just, I guess I'm saying that because I'm feeling, listening to Samia and Erica, you know, all of us channeling, not even channeling, but centering, offering, claiming our bodies. Um, it feels really powerful and necessary for me in each moment, but I feel like in this particular moment with these sisters, I'm just praising our bodies right now and Ian mentioning, you know, his body being snatched by, by one of the poems he heard. And that's how I feel, but I feel um, the dance of the body right now, even in grief um, holidays right now, we're talking, Erica was talking about holidays and it's really, really hard. And those of us who have, you know, the griefs of, um, you know, mothers, sons, fathers, aunties, pop pops, grandmoms, you know, cousins who aren't here to celebrate that time with us wherever we are you know we carry them um but I'm, I'm just i'm thinking about those the absence and yet the presence that still comes beyond the body um and i think it's very astonishing this poem is called seeing the body this is the title poem of the of the collection Seeing the body, she died and I, in the spring of her blood, I remember my mother's first injury, surprise of unborn petals curling red, then dark around her wrist. Some fruit she cut, some onion, some body with skin and sharp seeds. She fed me. She lived us and I, she held we and I. She kept speaking with those flowers falling from her blood, taking her across the sky to death. I remember her voice like a horn I never want to pull out of my heart. And the next life, which is here and here, I gather every mouth that ever sang my mother's blues. She burned and I, she talked back hard at God. Oh, my mother, she danced unbroken too. Bale of grief on my back, opening into something black I wear. A life of flesh, like a petal or fruit or burning. I've carried everything and I'm tired. My mother survived and I, but she did not live. She told me nothing and I, she was waiting the entire time. How does the elegy believe me? Together, we crossed the sky. There was a gate and we walked through the world like that. She wrote we and I, she was last or never seen. And I, brown eyes without life, opened her eternity when the air and her stopped. And I, she was last seen dying. She was too silent for the first time in her life. The spring of my mother's blood, hot in God, the dark dark beyond the closed door. 
that won't move again. This next poem is called, um, it's an obad, um, which are poems that I kind of adore. And I wanna read it for this gathering of all of us together, um, chosen family for sure for me. And um, just thinking of those really bright places where your people find you, they come to you, you arrive at them with all your mess and all your wounds and all your fineness and they they open their arms to you and it's just kind of like it's a miracle i hold on to tightly every day and you know it, it probably sounds really fucking woo woo but i'm into woo woo right now i don't i don't i just need i need all of us to live you know and not just to live but to thrive to fly to dance oba to langston when the light wakes and finds again the music of brooms in Mexico, when daylight pulls our hands from grief and hearts cleaned raw with sawdust and salt water flood their dazzling vessels, when the catfish in the river raise their eyelids towards your face, when sweet grass bends and waves across battlefields where sweat and sugar marry. When we hear our people wearing tongues fine with plain greeting. How you doing? Good morning. When I pour coffee and remember my mother's love of buttered grits. When the trains far away in memory begin to turn their engine toward a deep is burn my mass. When I see a woman walking down the street, holding her mind like a leather belt. When I pluck a blues note for my lazy shadow and cast its soul from my page. When I see God's eyes looking up at black folks, flying between moonlight and museum. When I see a good looking people who are my truest poetry. When I pick up this pencil like a flute and blow myself away from my death. I listen to you again beneath the mercy of a blue morning's grammar. Thank you so much. Um, Everyone just be well and take good care. It's kind of amazing. Um, I just want to end with a poet. Um, it's very short, but it's a beautiful poem by Henry Dumas called Kef 12. And I like the kind of energy between Lucille Clifton's life and Henry Dumas and his life and what he would have written had he been alive in the way he should have been. Take up the blood from the grass, son. Take it up. These people do not thirst for it. Take up the insect children that play in the grass, son. Take them away. These people are sick of them. Take down the long slender reeds, son. Cut them down. These people cannot make flutes any longer. Now, son, come closer to the earth, even closer than that. Take away the shape from the metal, son. They are like stone, these people. Now make them lava. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rachel. Uh, that was, you know, there were, there were moments in that that were um, hard, but, but necessary to hear. I, I, I so appreciate it. And some lines that, that jumped out are the world insists you return. I think that's going to be my anthem in, in 2021. Um, for sure. <laughs> and I love some of the humor. Too. I'm, I'm into woo woo right now. I, I think we all are. I think we all need to be. Um, 
And yeah, I'm always interested in, in these readings how just without me being intentional, things sort of come together. And I think the body was definitely a, a theme this time around. So I, I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to end with one poem by Gwendolyn Brooks. Um, the poem is from a section. It's a section from uh, A Catch of Shy Fish. It's the, I believe it's the last um, poem in that that longer poem. Uh, the poem is not as harsh as the title suggests. I think it's a good poem to, to send us off into the new year. Big Bessie throws her son into the street. A day of sunny face and temper. The winter trees are musical. Bright lameness from my beautiful disease. You have your destiny to chip and eat. Be precise with something better than candles in the eye. Candles are not enough. At the root of the well, a wild, inflammable stuff. Pioneer of days and ways, be gone. Haunt out your own or make your own alone. Go down the street. Um, with the exigencies of family work uh, and, and my own poems, uh, I'm, I think I'm going to move the, the reading to, to an every other month schedule to, for it to be a little more feasible. So our next kitchen table reading will be the, the third um, Sunday in February. Um, and we hope to see you at, at, at that time. Thank you again to the Solstice MFA program um, for, for hosting and for being such a wonderful community. Bravo, and, and thank you to all the poets. If, poets, if you could come back on stage for a second and get your, your just applause. Um, thank you to all the poets, Samia Bashir, uh, Erica Foreman, and Rachel Eliza Griffith. Um, thank you to Sarah Bird for interpreting. Um, so get out on the street. Uh, here's to 2021 being a better year than, than 2020, and I hope to see you in February. Have a good rest of your Sunday. Beautiful. Yeah, that was amazing. <laughs>